Hello, Ken Spriggs here uh, with a, um, a new uh, build on a kit that I'm working on. Um, I had started the uh, Star Trek Discovery from round two, and I'm still working on that. Uh, a bit of some issues with getting the lighting to fit into it, so uh, I put that aside for the moment. Uh, what I want to focus on is um, continuing the theme that I started with the um, spin drift from Mobius from Land of the Giants. Uh, building some of the kits that I built as a child when I first started this hobby. So some other ones that I want to work on um, include the other kits that I loved from that era from Aurora, uh, the Moon Bus from 2001 Space Odyssey, and the uh, Flying Sub from Voice at the Bottom of the Sea. And uh, the Flying Sub also comes from Mobius and there's a there's the same scale version of it which I'm going to be working on and I have some ideas for that. Uh, but for this video, I'm going to be working on the uh, Stargazer Moon Bus, which uh, is a resin kit, and it's a 1144 scale kit, and um, it's a very intricate kit. It's really well done, uh, so kudos to Stargazer, uh, to Ian Walsh, who, um, who creates those fantastic kits from from him for the resin so um, this one's about the same scale as the spin drift and the flying sub which all come out to be about three and a half inches long give or take uh, great interior to it so I'll show you that as I start working on it and um, the idea that I'm going to be working on is to recreate the box art from the original Roar kit or from the reissued uh, Mobius kit that shows the the um, the, the build-up model on a lunar base on, on like a plaster base that they made. Uh, I showed that at the beginning of this video so I'm going to reproduce that in styrofoam and some foam paste and uh, but in a very smaller scale as you can see from this kit um, and I'm gonna have it lit up so it's gonna be pretty cool. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and take a look and see um, how that's coming along. All right, so uh, here is the basic shape of the um, diorama for the mini moon bus. I just used some regular uh, styrene sheet and I cut out the base and then I just used my foam cutter wire to kind of scallop the edges a bit, give it some, some contour. Uh, I then made a piece in the back. It was a little short, so I added a second piece on. And none of this is gonna look this way when I'm done. I'm going to be using um, some foam paste that um, I've used before. It's called Smooth Finish from Floorcraft. It's really great stuff. It's a um, it's a, a paste that you can add water to, and um, and you can uh, smooth it onto styrofoam, and it hardens overnight. It can be uh, painted. It can be sanded. You can make whatever shapes you want from it over this. So these will be like the structures that I'll use generally to build the foam up onto. So I'll smooth these out and make them look more like the rocks. Um, and then uh, again, the goal that I'm going for is the Aurora box. Now this is the new Mobius version, but I'm gonna make it look, well, it's the same picture really. Um, and you can see all they did was use some some plaster, I believe, and just make a really crude moon, moon uh, looking rocks and painted it gray. And then you have the picture of the real model inside of it, which is kind of cool, which I always liked. So um, I'm going to have a backdrop behind it with the space, and it's going to have the 2001 Moon Bus logo that it had in the original Aurora kit. And then I'm going to have the Aurora logo down in the right corner here as well. So it kind of is reproducing the way the kit looks on the model somewhat. So, okay. So this is a basic structure. I have it glued down right now. Let that harden overnight. Get a nice solid uh, base to build on. And at some point I can cut out where the battery's gonna go, the two AA battery holder underneath. I can cut a little opening there for it. And this, is, this will work 
for that to fit under there. And all the wiring coming underneath it and it'll just come up right here for the moon bus since I'm gonna light it. Okay, so that's the general structure that I'm going for. And, uh, and then we'll start doing some more corn touring. Uh, now this stuff here, it was really hard to come by. I got it at uh, Hobby Lobby originally, but I checked around all the Hobby Lobbies and nobody had it. They stopped carrying it. It was discontinued, which really frustrated me. I even looked at Michaels and Joanne Fabrics. They didn't have any in stock either. I would have had to travel about, about an hour to get some. Uh, luckily, there was a store, a Hobby Lobby, about 45 minutes away. And they had one of these left, and it was it was marked down from five ninety nine to a dollar forty three, so that kind of made up for it. And this is a brand new tub of it, um, so I'll show how I use that here once I let this dry. Uh, but this stuff is awesome; I've used it quite a lot. It lasts a long time. Now I'll probably use a lot of it on this because I'm going to have pretty much the whole thing coated, all the visible surfaces coated with it, so I can reproduce a, a lunar surface so okay all right so I started applying the um, the foam paste the smooth finish paste onto it this is what it looks like it's kind of a stiff paste but you can put water in it and you can thin it down and and apply it and it will dry in about 24 hours and it'll dry to a nice foam hard finish which is nice so all this detail that I'm putting in is going to solidify and you'll be able to touch it and it won't hurt anything. So the parts that I stuck up, little piece of foam, I built those up with some more of the foam paste to give them some detail. And uh, to help with some of that I'm using this sponge here that I'm just dabbing onto it while it's wet and it kind of gives it a rough texture. Also experimenting with some craters. Uh, I, I put a little spot in the middle there. I press the, the model down into it to have a little spot where that's going to sit. Uh, now this is going to have its legs on it, of course, so it's going to be taller. So that's not going to be a problem once I'm done. But that's the general place where it's going to go. So I don't need to build up any detail in that area. All right. So I still need to put some around the edges. And around the back and build that up. Uh, I'm leaving the back of it flat because what I want to do is I want this to look like as I said before the the image on the box that shows the real model kit in a plaster moonscape that they created. Um, and so that's what I'm going for. I'm not really going for realism of the moon. I'm going for the idea that there's a lot of plaster and it's built up and it just is painted gray and it looks like the moon. That's kind of the idea. It's not exact, it's not completely accurate to it, but what I want to do is I want to get a I want to get an image of the of the box that has the um the 2001 moon bus from Aurora on it and a space background and I'm going to print that out on some glossy paper and just have that on the back of it so it will when you look at it you're gonna see like it's the top of the box and then the moon scape and then over here I'm gonna put in something to put the Aurora maybe just put like a oval disc into it and put the Aurora symbol which is down here on the on the box um, and that'll just kind of present this as a display from there so okay so this stuff is really great I'm probably gonna need to get a little bit more so I will have to probably do some traveling as I explained it's really hard to get now I could get it online and order it and just have it mailed to me but I just I hate to do that because of the shipping oftentimes is more than the cost of the product and some other places they were selling it for $5.99 I got it on sale other places want like nine something for it which is crazy why is it so much so we'll see what happens but um I might have to take a trip this weekend on and uh, to some stores in about 45 minutes to an hour away and pick up some more. So, okay. But this is coming along great. Uh, let me continue to work on that. All right, there we go. So that turned out fantastically. It's still 
a bit wet, so I have to let that dry overnight. Put a couple of craters in here and there. I have a little spot there for the moon bus. And uh, the sponge was a great idea. Now you gotta get this kind that has a lot of big holes in it, that kind of thing. I don't know if it's a real sponge, but it's definitely not like the really fine sponge with the, you know, barely any craters itself. So it worked really good for just dabbing it down. And I cut a little piece out so I could get little parts in between and get that there. So I used an entire tub of this, which was my last one. I just have a little bit left for some touch up if I need to on it once it dries. And that's the beauty of this stuff. This stuff is great. I'm definitely gonna get some more of it. Um, you can add water to it and make it very thin so it goes on real smooth. Give it about 15 minutes and it'll start to set up again so then you can, can mold it and shape things. It's very light because it's just foam. So it's not like plaster. Uh, plaster is really tricky to use. Uh, I mean, it, it's not tricky. You, you put water in it you stick it you mold it how you want it and it dries pretty quickly and it sets up but it's really hard and it's really heavy this is very light so this whole diorama is very light it's not going to be heavy at all if this were plaster this would be a really weighty project and i don't think i would have got the same kind of detail out of plaster that i got out of this foam and when it's done too i can still drill through it easily i can sand it easily i can still do some other stuff but you definitely want to get the detail that you want while it's still wet um, the nice thing is you've got plenty of time this will not fully set up and harden until about 12 to 24 hours so I've still got time if I wanted to to go back and tweak it but I think I, I think it's good the way it is I like how it looks I have a lot of random patterns and it really does look very much like the um, like the image that you have on the box for the Aurora kit. So it's gonna be great. Um, and then what I'll probably end up doing is I'll end up cutting out an oval for the Aurora symbol, put some more of the paste there and kind of cement that in place around it. So it looks like it's, it's molded into the base, which would be pretty cool. And then I can just print out a, um, the Aurora logo and stick that on there. Like I said, I can do the back. Um, and of course once this is dry I'll get it painted I'll do some dark colors on it uh, and then put some light gray and that sort of thing and make it look like a like a moon a moon uh, landscape so all right so very happy with that it's turning out really well just let that set up completely overnight and once it's done it'll be I'll be able to handle it it'll be nice and solid and firm and it's it's a really great stuff so highly recommend it uh, can't get it at Hobby Lobby anymore, at least not around here. But um, I have seen it online for Joanne Fabrics and for Michaels, if you have those near you. Although my local ones did not have any in stock. But I, I can order it online and have it mailed to me. I'm just going to have to pay some more. But they're, they're like Hobby Lobby. They have discount specials, at least 40% off. Sometimes... I think Joe and Fabric has like a 20% off of your entire order right now. So I might just get some of those. Just buy about three. And, and they do last for a long time. Uh, just keep it sealed because it will start to harden. But if it, if it gets really solid, you just stick some water in it. it. Makes a nice thin paste. And if you put a little too much in, just give it some time. It'll set up again and then you start where you, you know, go back to where you started. So, um, all right. So this is coming along fantastically. Once that fully sets, we can look at some painting and then I can move on to uh, building the moon bus and getting that all ready to go. And this is going to be lit. Still figuring out how to do that. I do have two holes I drilled in the front for the headlights. But I want to have the red for the cockpit and the blue for the, the passenger compartment. So, okay. All right. All right, so I've let the um, smooth finish dry overnight. It's nice and solid, so I can pick the base up. It's very light. Uh, and like I said, um, as opposed to something like plaster, which is a very heavy material, 
This is just like styrofoam. It's very light. Uh, it can be a little fragile, but plaster is as well. Plaster can break and crack and that sort of thing. But once I get it painted, I mean, it's not that fragile. I can touch it. I can move it around. It can be painted, that kind of thing. And if I needed to, if it were the type of surface where I needed to sand it or, or carve it, I could do that as well. In this case, I don't want to do that because I want it to be rough and to look this way. So, okay. So it's all dried and ready to go. So I'm going to start doing some painting on it. And as you can see, I left the back of it just the plain styrofoam and also the bottom. I've started to cut out an area for a battery. Um, thinking about using a, um, a AA battery holder there, as you can see, but I may go with a coin battery on this particular one only because. This is a, not a really thick piece of styrofoam and it's going to be a little tricky getting that in there and I don't want to dig through the surface and expose any of this here. So we'll see. Figure that out. Uh, worst case scenario, I could just have it on the back, sitting in the back and going through. It wouldn't be noticeable once it's, uh, once it's all displayed. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and get some paint on it. Uh, I'm just going to do some basic gray painting but to start with I'm going to use some flat black Tamiya and I'm going to spray it over it kind of patchwork mostly in some of the, the areas that are going to be darker like the craters that sort of thing but give it you know some different character to it then I'm going to go over it with some neutral gray which is darker and that's also a flat and then let that dry and then over top of that, I'm going to go over with some light misting. And what this is, this is not flat white. What I've done is I've mixed a little bit of gray into it. So it's an even lighter gray. And that'll go over top and just mist it in certain areas. And once again, the idea is to have it uneven and patchy because the, the, the rock would not be all one color. So I want to get a little more natural look to it. So, okay. All right, so I'm starting to um, cut out and sand out the pieces for the for the kit to start putting them together, and um, working with um, some ideas for the lighting as well. So I have to kind of think that through also. Um, so the way the lighting is going to work is I have the two front headlights drilled out, and those are going to be pretty simple. I have two very tiny little SMDs that are going to go in there. They're from Evans Designs, which I get all mine from. Um, they refer to them as uh, Z LEDs. They're very, very tiny. And you can see right there I have some holes drilled out. And they come out the front. So they're just going to go right through. Oops. And they're gonna they're gonna go right down through the kit. What I'll probably do is bring them through and then drill a hole right under the seats and just take them down right through there. So you're really not gonna see them that much. Uh, these are all loose right now. Um, and then the the roof I've been playing around with a little bit. I think I have the top blue light pretty well the way I want it to be. I just have to glue it in place. The front I'm still working on. It's not working out as well as I want it to be. Um, for, the, for the blue light, I want it to be a really pale blue. I don't want it to be super bright blue. So I'm not using a blue, L, blue SMD. Um, so right now I just have some white SMDs. So even though I put some 
some clear red plastic over it and some clear vellum paper. I'm just not getting the bright enough red that I want for the front. So that one I'm going to have to use um, a red SMDs with it, which I don't have any. So I'm going to have to do another order of lights. I just did one and didn't order enough. So I have to look at my inventory and figure out what I need and, and order some more of those. So, so I'll be working on that once that um, once I get those lights in. So in the meantime, I'm trying to think ahead to how I'm going to do the painting and how it's all going to work. Uh, what I'll probably do is glue these seats in and the controls in before I do any painting. And then I can, I can just paint the whole thing whatever color I'm going to end up with, which is probably going to be like a light gray. And then, um, and then go back in and paint the seats and that sort of thing. So we'll see. I haven't decided yet. Uh, the kit comes with enough for 10 seats to be in the passenger compartment and two in the cockpit. Uh, I'm only going to use six because 10 is a little too crowded. And also because the Aurora kit, which I'm trying to imitate, only had six seats in the back. And I know it's not accurate, but once again, I'm not going for accuracy. I'm going for accuracy to the Aurora kit. Even though these controls are not, or I'm sorry, these, come on, focus. Even though the um, cargo are not accurate to the Aurora kit, I'm not going to worry about it. These are actually pretty cool. It's little uh, backpacks for the spacesuits, little helmets. You've got the, um, some other little things over there. So I'm going to leave those as they are and just paint them up. Not really going to worry too much about it. Um, so let me go ahead and hash this out and then I'm also using some of the same figures that I used in my Millennium Falcon Mos Eisley display uh, and I showed you that in a previous video but these are um, it came in a pack which was quite awesome it's 72 figures tiny little figures and scale from C Masters I got it for 20 bucks 19.99 really really good deal so I have all these sprues of figures a lot of repeats which is good too so I can use them for different things but all different poses you got standing and you got sitting and you, know, you got adults and children so I've got three figures so far which I kind of like you have a seated, a seated figure which I'll do another one like that one standing and he's holding a hat but I can fashion that to look like a space helmet it's pretty cool. We've got this one standing with his arm raised up, so he might be reaching up and touching a control or something. So, so that's pretty cool. And these will work. They're maybe a little off on scale, but I think they'll be just fine inside the kit to give that look of the figures in the kit. So, all right. So this is coming along pretty well. Let me keep working on this. And um, once I start getting it glued together, I'll start getting some some uh, paint onto it all right so i'm going to go ahead and put in the um the smds for the two headlights that i drilled out that i showed previously and the holes come into the cockpit as you can see right there and then i'm gonna put some holes right down below where the seats are gonna go so the seats will somewhat hide the wires and they'll go down through the bottom so those are going to be wired separately from the roof and then they'll be put together in the end. So what I'm using for these are a new SMD that um, Evan Designs sells. It's called a Z LED. Super, super tiny. So let me kind of show you. So there is the chip one there on the right. And on the left is the Z. And see how super 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 tiny that is they have two other sizes in between they have the chip the nano <clears throat> and the pica or pica the picas i thought were pretty small but these z ones are really really super tiny the little yellow square is the tip of it but still very bright. Let me put a battery in that and show you what that looks like. All 
All right, so there the light is in the headlight. Very bright as you can see. Now it's not that bright in real life. The camera makes it look a lot brighter than it is. It is, uh, it's contained into the headlight part. I may have to put some flat black in there. I put a little bit of silver, but I probably need some flat black to, to mask it in. And then, uh, sorry, there's the wire coming back out through it. And then what I'm going to do is just put a little dab of five minute epoxy over top of them for both sides and that'll hold it in place. Give it kind of a lens. So, but very, very bright for such a tiny little SMD. You can see it fits barely into that hole right there. All right. All right, so as I was working out some of the logistics of the lighting and the window in front, I decided to go ahead and cut off the front of the cockpit part that was one piece on the roof. Uh, and that'll accomplish a couple of things. One, I can go ahead and um, use that and have it glued in place and painted before I put in my windows. I'm doing some curved rounded windows the ones that fill up the entire part instead of this the little pieces inside I'm sorry <laughs> so with this piece cut off I can go ahead and get everything painted on the front here and glue this in place first so I have a nice solid piece to put the windows into before I do the rest of it and also uh, I can put in the cockpit lights because as you can see those two little bumps right there are supposed to be the like little tubes sticking down with the lights of them so I can either sand those off or um, put lights around them something like that uh, I had to put another light order in I have some more of the little Z lights coming in in red which I think will be great because they can go two of them right up here. And so once this is glued in place, I can wire them down through the bottom just like I'm doing the, the headlights. So they're not going to really be that visible. I can take them down through the sides and down through the bottom. And so those will be obscured. Then the only lights I have to worry about are the ones in the roof coming down in the passenger cockpit so we'll figure that out as well because I do want to be able to take the roof off and show the interior but I don't want necessarily lights hanging down and that sort of thing so we'll, we'll still work on that and get it figured out how that's going to work okay so um, still working on some little stripping for the windshield to fit into I'm going to do some up on the top as well to make like a nice little little groove and on the sides of this little piece so the window can be pressed into place because it's it's flexible but it needs to be forced into there and then held in place while it dries so all right Alright, so I have all of the lighting wired into it. Uh, this little blue cover is just taped on right now for the passenger compartment just to give it a slightly blue tint. That'll end up being glued on instead. Um, the wire is just going through here for now. I have to figure out a little bit of play in it so I can take the lid off and see inside for the interior once it's done. I have the um, the wires coming out through the bottom so you see the two there in the front under the inside the compartment so you won't really see it it'll go underneath the landing gear and come out through the back uh, one coming out through the side right there which will also go flat onto the bottom they'll all be glued onto the bottom may put some channels in it I'm not quite sure um, 
but I want to generally bring the wiring back to this section right here. It'll be in between the two back landing gear, so it'll come down through the base. So you're not really going to see the wiring sticking out from the bottom of the ship. So, okay. And I um, finished the little bit of stripping along the edges of this cockpit for the for the windows. So I did some sorry to focus right there on the middle part on either end and some right up on the top underneath as you can see. With the goal that I want something solid to be able to put the um, the clear window onto it. Let me find that window here. Okay, because it's not quite curved as it should, so I have to kind of force it and bend it into place. But that'll give me something to glue it against. And I can probably glue like the top onto it first, and then glue down around the other sides, and I'll have an, I'll have a little bit of a lip to be able to put it in place around it. So just use some very thin stripping. I think it's .010 very thin I just glued it in place all right so um, I want to go ahead and get the interior inside it's not really too much to it there's some seats a little cargo um, not sure what I'm gonna do yet with the pilots because I want to get it painted with um, some of the Tamiya fine surface primer and then I'm gonna do definitely some black Probably most of the outside will be black, so I can do some black basing for the detail. But then I definitely want this part black before I can put the windows on or paint the rest of the white or anything else like that. So, okay. So still kind of working out the logistics because there's different parts that have to be done first before I can do the rest of it. So I also got the back glued on. A few a uh, few light leaks there I have to fix up but that's glued in place Oops, sorry. and then work out the window inserts as well that are gonna have to go on to the to the sides because those will be a different color also all right all right so I glued the seats into the back and I'm only using six of them it comes with um, actually 10 for here they'd be really crowded and I'm gonna have some people in there so I didn't want it to be too crowded uh, I glued the control panel inside there which is a little tricky to get that in there but I got it in there um, it's, it's a little tricky to put together because I want to paint the whole thing with the Tamiya uh, fine um, primer and then I'm gonna have to go back and paint everything I can still get into it I should still be able to get in there with a brush and paint that control panel it's just gonna be like a tan and then have a little bit of color on it for the controls <coughs> excuse me same with the seats and these things here I didn't glue in the seats for the for the pilots yet because that's gonna be in the way of painting everything else and they can be painted and glued in at the very end um, I glued these two parts on the sides and I want to be able to take the roof off so I cut out grooves on either side just like it is on the kit the bigger kit so it can go over top a little bit of gap in there but I can put some thin styrene strip around it to to seal it off and get it uh, to where I want it to be okay so one other thing I want to work on before I'm ready to get this painted or at least primered is to come up with some walls because that's the one thing that's missing here the kit has two partitions in the front uh, between one that that partitions off the, the cockpit and then one for some or whatever reason the passenger compartment and then you have this section here I think in the kit these are actually over this 
or this part's further back I'm not sure it's not quite accurate but um the big kid I mean so I used to think that was like a doorway even though this is the doorway so I'm not sure why they had that part partition section but I'm gonna get and use some styrene and I'm gonna create some partitions to go in between there um, just to make it accurate but also because if I have a little bit of a partition it will keep that red light a lot more contained in the front so it won't spill over into the where the blue light is back in the back so okay we can work on that All right, here are the two little partitions that I made up as I showed in my previous stills. Far from being accurate, but they have to fit into this compartment, and they do. A little bit of styrene stripping to imitate the uh, little bits of rope, I believe is what they are. Like rope coils that are on there. All right, let me go ahead and get them into the kit, and I'll show you how those are going to look. All right, so I do have the front um, partition glued into place, and I had to do some more sanding on it so that it would fit. Uh, because once I get the roof on, it just giving me a fit problem. Uh, the back one I ended up having to take out because it just wasn't working. Um, I'm gonna let that go for now. I might still redo that one, but uh, the front one's good, and it does kind of uh, channel off that light a bit from the cockpit coming back in the back. So we'll just let that go for the moment. Uh, we go ahead and work on some other parts of this here. All right, so as I showed in the previous stills, I have worked on some stripping for the side of the kit. And I made it to mimic what the actual larger kit has, which is this piece right here. Better focus. Which um, goes on the, sorry, show you the size difference there. Goes on the side of the, the roof right there. We're actually more like that. And it, not only does it give the side trim design, but it also helps to seal the kit because that kind of clicks into the bottom of the, of the ship as well. Um, so it also does that for this. It covers up that seam and that groove that was right there. And it light blocks any light that was coming through when the roof is on since I'm keeping it removable. There it is on both sides. Looks really cool, I think. And I put some shipping around these uh, thruster units, which I guess is what they're called as well. So that seals them off. All right. So let me go ahead and put the battery on to the um, interior light. And I'll just kind of show you what that's going to look like. All right, there you go. So as you can see, it's a, it's a really light pale blue, which is the way it looks in the film. Uh, and um, also notice that it I don't have it lit up the whole cabin you can see where the light is and that'll be masked off so you're not going to see that light leak right there but um, it's only like the center of the passenger compartment and um, rather than put another light in the back which I'd have to do to light the whole thing I actually like that because it looks more realistic uh, in the film you just have the three passengers who are uh, Haywood Floyd and the other two gentlemen that are going to see the monolith. So uh, that center seat there on this side is where I'm going to have the seated figure, and that's going to be him. And then two other figures next to him. And then you're going to have the passenger, I'm sorry, the, um, the pilots in the cockpit. Um, uh, and then I'm going to have like maybe the other two standing next to him because they were talking about the monolith. So 
So that would make sense that they only have uh, certain lights turned on and rather than the whole passenger compartment lit up. Um, also notice that uh, that stripping is doing its job and um, keeping that, that gap there from the roof from any light leaks showing through. So that's really cool. All right, so let me go ahead and show you the, uh, the cockpit. All right, there you go. And also don't pay any attention to that light leak through the front. That's not supposed to be visible. That will be painted so you won't see it. Uh, and it comes across not quite the same red on the camera, but it's a really bright red. It looks just like it does in the film, which is pretty cool. So it's going to it's gonna light up that cockpit. And of course the rest of this will be painted white and then the black paneling right there. All right, and um, it's it's a little bright, so I may there's a, I have a little resistor to put onto this once I get it wired in, um, so it doesn't look quite as as bright red um, in that way too. So okay, let me show you one more thing with the headlights. All right, and there are the two headlights, looking pretty sweet. Uh, they have a little bit of a bluish tint right now because I have some micro mask on them to protect them when I paint the whole kit. Um, but it does make them look a little more realistic on the camera uh, rather than getting them washed out uh, if it didn't have that covering it. Uh, so those are going to be pretty cool as well. Alright, so the only thing I have to work on now before I'm ready to paint is to seal up a few more little gaps uh, right here on the front of this. Uh, there's a bit of a red leak coming through from the, the cockpit. It's a really thin area, so I'm not quite sure how to get that to be sealed up because I do want the roof to be removable. Also on the back, uh, get over there. there are some leaks around the top of that as well that I want to seal in. Uh, and again, it's, it's all because I want the roof to be removable. Otherwise, I could easily seal those up and just paint it. Uh, but I'm playing with some ideas with some two-part mold putty, as you can see right here with uh, sealing in that back and possibly right up here so okay all right so coming along fantastically uh, i'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video at this point uh, i will definitely get this done in the next part which should be coming out soon so thank you to all my new subscribers uh, stay tuned and then um, we'll get this wrapped up and then we'll start working on the flying sub in the same scale all right